White and pink noises can be generated, recorded, and saved as audio assets in Studio One 4 by utilizing PreSonus's Tone Generator. Here I have a blank Studio One file, and I'll open the Effects panel. If you don't see it over to the right, you can click on View, Show Effects, or simply push the number 7. In the PreSonus Effects, scroll down until you find the Tone Generator plugin. I'll just add the Tone Generator by clicking and dragging it over. That creates a new track and opens the plugin controls. The Tone Generator can make a few different tones. For instance, I'll select the sine wave. Then, there are three options for activating the tone. There is off, I guess that's obvious. Gated simply means that there needs to be a MIDI signal sent to turn on the sound. For the purposes of this tutorial though, I'm going to be selecting on or off, depending on whether I want the tone active. Now the Tone Generator is playing the sine wave. I can make some adjustments such as to the frequency. I can give the tone some wobble. I can switch the quality of the tone by changing the waveform to a rectangle or a sawtooth wave. These tones can all be created and captured in much the same way as the white and pink noises I'm about to make files for. So, to play white or pink noise, just select one or the other in the waveform menu. Notice that with white and pink noise, all the different controls are removed as they are not needed for creating these sounds. I'll just leave it set to white noise. I'll name the noise generator track Noise Generator. Then, create a new track. This can be done by pressing Ctrl Shift N or by going to Track Add Track. Before I make a new track though, notice the levels on our Noise Generator Effects track. The generator is making a stereo signal, so I'm going to want to make a stereo track. I'll use the shortcut keys Ctrl Shift N to open the new track dialog box. I'm going to call my new track White Noise, make sure the format is set to stereo, then change the input to the Noise Generator track, then click OK. I'll arm the White Noise track to record. Now, when the tone plays in the Tone Generator track, I can see it registering audio in the White Noise track. I can press record, and now I'm recording the white noise from the Tone Generator into the White Noise track. You can let this record as long as you'd like. Now that I have the white noise, I'll record some pink noise. Instead of using the shortcut keys, I'm going to select Track, Add Track Stereo. This creates a new stereo track that I'm going to rename to Pink Noise. Notice that the input of this track is set to L plus R, the default. Click on the input dropdown and select Track Noise Generator. I'll arm the pink noise for recording and unarm the white noise. Now, if I play the noise generator sent to generate pink noise, we can see the pink noise track receiving the sound in the level meter. I'm ready to record. Now if my needs required, I can do any sort of finishing touches to these files here and bounce them. Since I don't want to make any changes though, I will simply head to the media folder of the project and there are the white and pink noise files. If you didn't name your tracks, they will be named something like Track 1 and Track 2. You'll notice an extra file for the track you still have armed for recording. This is just a shell of a file, a placeholder for your next recording. If I close Studio 1, you'll see the second file disappears. If we failed in our goal to make this video clear, concise, and helpful, or if you have any questions about this tutorial or about related topics in Studio 1.4, please let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.